Everybody, it's Tyler here at Fit Dal checking team number 2468. Team, appreciate. By the way, huge congratulations. Uh, Impact uh, finalists last year, now for the second time. I think the only team in the world has done that. Personally, I think it's time for a Hall of Fame run this year. Uh, so we'll see how your team does on that. We're going to, of course, talk about their robot as well, too. 246 has been building great robots year after year. Matter of fact, they were Alliance captains of championships uh, last year as well, too. Uh, so can't wait to see what they bring for this year's robot. We're going to be covering, uh, they have an intake, a cascade, uh, elevator in here, an arm, and some uh, cool program with Pat Plunder we'll be talking about coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge up field and kit up parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. FRC competition season is here. Submit your favorite moments to FRC Clips of the Week by each Sunday at discord.gg slash first updates now. Also, the FRC Top 25 poll is open Sunday, 5 p.m. Eastern to Monday, 5 p.m. Eastern, where you can vote for your top 25 teams of the week at firstupdatesnow.com slash FRC Top 25. Alex, let's start out with your uh, intake here. Talk to me about kind of as we follow that Cuban code journey. Uh, how did you come up with this this type of intake? And the one thing I got to ask for 2468 is uh, I have to admit, I was maybe expecting a full width intake on here. So I'd love to hear more about why this width was right for your team and how you came up with this design. Yeah, so uh, a couple things. We wanted to start uh, the year with picking up uh, cones and cubes. That was very important to us, especially sideways cones, because we thought there'd be a lot knocked over on the field. So uh, here, when we can put it down for a cone, we can take off the ground flange first, so that's very helpful for us. Uh, and then, I'll take, okay, let's do uh, cubes. Cube. So that gives us a lot of functionality. It's very quick. Uh, this roller helps us uh, pick up objects very efficiently, and we can also score them very well. Uh, as for the width. Um, historically, we've liked full width intakes, but um, one of the things we wanted to do this year was go in between the hybrid nodes and um, score, rescore those elements that were scored on the bottom row. Sure. So that gives us an 18 inch constriction of how wide we can be. Um, so that's another ability that we have, and we just go uh, basically align these two plates in between the hybrid node. Something I ask you uh, from an uh, uh, intake area, are you mostly then picking up from the ground, like so you're having the human player slide on the ground, or do you also pick up from the stations as well? Yeah, so uh, we only pick up from the ground. Uh, we drop off at the single substation, and uh, our human player has gotten very good at um, orientating the tip always towards us. So I can go as driver and just pick it up really quickly and back out. Uh, and it's been working really well for us. It's pretty quick, so yeah. Spencer, talk to me about the uh, arm uh, as we go into uh, following that pathway once again. Uh, how does that arm kind of hold it together? And then we'll be talking about your cascade in just a second as well, too. Sure. So essentially, we decided that we wanted to have just a static arm. It wouldn't have any like wrist at the base or anything, because we thought we could get uh, an optimal geometry just with a static arm. We also have a wrist here. So essentially, we have the Rev Max Spline tubing. We switched to this from half inch hex because it transfers torque better and also just holds up over the course of a season and over the course of testing, we found. We also have this nice little X here. This provides us with nice cross support so that if we get hit, we don't turn our arm into a parallelogram and it keeps the arm spaced out to the spacing that we want. We have our motor back here. This drives the arm and we have a gear train and then chain. We put shims in between our gears and hex stock because we wanted to minimize the amount of play that was in our wrist so our programmers could have an easier time. And we used chain because it held up better because we found that belts just couldn't handle the amount of weight our intake was at certain orientations. Ben, as we keep moving on, let's talk about the cascade uh, on your uh, bot here. Talking about uh, how your elevator came together. I'm really interested to hear about the packaging on this as well, too. Uh, so you went very wide uh, with the elevator itself. Uh, so when you're looking at it from a design perspective, uh, how did you end up coming up with this type of uh, angle, especially as well, too, on your cascade? So we are using the West Coast Products uh, bearing blocks, and our, we wanted our cascade to be as wide as possible, so that way we could attach the drive rail and have the most stability. And we decided on this angle because we found the angle between the cone poles and that we found that to be 57 degrees and so we wanted our cascade to match that so when you go up and down we match the cone poles exactly. So we have a two stage cascade so this chain drives the first stage up and the first stage is attached to the carriage and so we have uh, simultaneous motion as the cascade is raised. So when you're looking at uh, creating and getting up to that, that level three on there, did you have any other design considerations in mind before you got to this spot? We initially considered a 
a telescope on a pivot near the base. And we decided that, that since that would be such a long moment arm, that a cascade that's mounted at an angle would be much better for stability and have less slop overall. Abhinav, let's go into the uh, programming of this robot here. I know your team's using Path Planner, so I'd love to hear more about that process and any automation that goes into this robot as well, too. Yeah, uh, I'll start with the automation on here. So we want to make it as easier, easy for the drivers to use as possible. So instead of doing everything manually, we have a lot of presets here. So um, our controls, we have like a ground and scoring mode, and everything is like c controlled with PID. So um, you know we can intake uh, at certain positions just with one button. Um, and another thing we do is that like we don't have separate outtake buttons because we remember what the last game piece we intake was. Um, we have cascade presets, and this is all like sorted in table values, so we can easily change them um, as fast as possible. Then we have our dashboard. So this is what we use for like b before a match, like going in to make sure that everything's good. So we have IMU like uh, indicators for the yaw, and we added some stuff for the pitch and the roll because um, we noticed that our auto engage stuff. Um, we wanted to make sure that like those values are like normal um, before we go onto a field. Uh, we have indicators for our cascade and wrist, so we can reset them if we need to. Um, some options for like swerves, so like dead band, translation, rotation, um, and the auto selector and robot selector because we use this dashboard as well for 2687. So they have some configuration stuff that we, they would want for the match view. We have um, a driver camera there, and then we have some indicators for like drivers to basically look at if they need to, um, and then some handy uh, spark max codes and all that. Um, I do want to ask you on the when I saw the Cuban cone on there, what is it actually detecting for that? Are you using a, a camera detection, a sensor detection? Like how how does it actually determine if it's cone or cube? So this is actually not doing any detection. It literally just um, looks at what the um, the the uh, stored object is. So gotcha. we, we okay. just store what like the last thing we took was and then that's what it like displays so that way the driver knows. I mean this is literally just like for presets because we also automate our presets. They don't actually tell us like tell what the like whether they're scoring cone or cube because it remembers what it took last. That's so. right. I, I recall you mentioning that earlier as well too so cool yeah. to hear uh, for us well. Anything else from uh, programming side you want to cover? Yeah so our Pathfinder um, so for many years now we've used this uh, like Pathfinder, where we draw out paths and then we try to follow them. It makes it easier to run autonomous routines. So, like for example, we have an auto here, which, um, like, I, mean, I can make a new one here. So, if you want to make a new path, uh, we basically draw out a bunch of waypoints, and it like draws a path in between. We use like clothoid paths. Uh, a lot of teams use like spines, but um, yeah, we this is uh, we found this is like easier to implement. Um, and then along the path, we have waypoints for our heading because this is like holonomic. So, like last year, we had to make a lot of additions for that because you know we're running swerve, not tank. Um, so basically, with these waypoints, we're able to control like what heading we are at, or sorry, what orientation we are at, at every point uh, on the path, and that allows us to you know run paths. And then we follow these um, using like the encoders um, and the um, the IMU to basically like make sure that we're not like deviating from the path. Sure. Last thing I want to ask you is uh, for custom dashboards on here, we're starting to see more teams go that route for things. Uh, what advice do you have for teams who are maybe looking at getting to do a custom dashboard for future years? Um, I'd say take it slow. Um, when I was implementing the dashboard at first, um, there were a lot of like bugs and a lot of like issues because I also didn't know how to do it. Like, and I, I kind of went like, you know, head in first and we yeah. ended up with a lot of broken dashboards. I had to start over many, many times. Um, you can you can log a lot on your dashboard that you also don't need um, because like there's there's a lot of indicators here but frankly like half of them aren't even used um, so like don't feel like you have to put every single like constant that you're configuring or every single indicator every single state or log everything back to the dashboard because that's a lot of information that you don't need um, just do it as you go and um, like work with drivers this should be like a collaborative process right so. uh, two four six eight. Uh Good luck here uh, at Dallas. Uh, you got a great looking machine. Uh, and also I know from Impact Award, uh, very strong uh, presence there as well too. So can't wait to see how you do on both sides this season. Thanks yeah. a lot. Yeah. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SolidWorks, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge up field and kit up parts. Go to SolidWorks.com first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. The Charged Up competition season is here. We have a ton of live Twitch and YouTube content coming to you. All of our uploads and archives, including shows, behind the bumpers, finalysis, and more, are available at youtube.com slash first updates now. Check out all of our live shows on Mondays and Tuesdays at twitch.tv slash first updates now. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. 
keep the conversation going, and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now, and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.